You know, I have a lot, uh, a lot of stuff I was going to tell about Brenda. Uh, Brenda. <laughs> you know, it's the, it's this jewel. It, uh, it causes such a deep glare <laughs> that it put my mind asunder. There's so much to say about Linda, but you can see, I mean, so, this, the film, even though I was unable to see it, <laughs> I could hear it, and I knew most of it anyway, and I, I mean, you see, there's, what else can, what else can recommend her except her work, her heart, the person that she is. I, I first met this woman uh, when she was teaching high school English on 103rd Street in Watts. And she, oh, and she was the most darling young girl you can imagine. And they come to my office, her and, uh, uh, she came, her came. She, <laughs> she and uh, her then writing partner, the fabulous Mary Kay Place. And I thought, okay. <laughs> you know, and one was from Missouri and one was from Oklahoma, Oklahoma I think. Wasn't that Oklahoma, Mary? And, uh, <laughs> And coming from Detroit, you know, I knew pretty much they were like babes in the woods. And I, but out of a feminist sense of honor, I, and wanting to help young women climb the ladder of success, I gave them their first job. It took many, many years before Linda was able to give me my first job from her. But I'll say no more about it. Um, you know, I, I, I hired these two young women I, that, to write a sketch for me. And uh, I had an office and everything. I was like, very big deal. And, <laughs> and of course, I didn't expect that much. I didn't even know if they'd ever come back, even though I had paid them. <laughs> then I look up. I wake up one day, and the very first script they wrote together is nominated for an Emmy. Well, imagine. But imagine what a painful awakening that was. And then, can you believe it? The very first uh, film that Linda made became the iconic Man from Hope. All right. Do as you wish. Her first novel, Liberate, Liberating Paris, hit the New York Times bestseller list. By this time, they were not taking my call. <laughs> and then in April, praises are due here. Her first feature-length documentary, Bridegroom, came out. I saw. I went to the the. Uh, um, I went to the premiere just recently uh, at the uh, Academy, and I must tell you, you must, if you have not seen it, you must see it. It's so moving, so deeply, deeply moving, and so surprisingly funny in the most human, just human, expansive, inclusive way. So I hope you will all get a chance to see Bridegroom. It, uh, it's received critical raves, critics, you know, what do they call it? Rave, critical raves, is that right? Yeah. <sighs> perhaps, perhaps I should cover this. And, uh, <laughs> and it recently, and at the Tribeca Film Festival, it also won the Audience Award. I mean, people absolutely love this film. Anyway, I'm so hoping that you'll get to see it. But a lot of that you already know. Let me tell you stuff that you don't know. Like how as a young reporter covering LA's most notorious murder trial, Linda went daily into the courtroom with her own sense of justice, dignity, humanitarianism. She locked eyes with the defendant, determined to stare him down from his, his, uh, uh, his sense of heroic, uh, self-importance and uh, correctness in his own distorted philosophy of, of humanity in the world, 
and every day she broke his ass right there. <laughs> and that defendant was Charles Manson. This is the kind of woman we're talking about. And you probably also don't know that she spent 101 days in the White House, longer than William Henry Harrison or Patty Davis. <laughs> Or what you really need to know is that through her Designing Women Foundation, she, she has personally put 150 women through college. And I have been there. I went to that small town in the Ozarks, and um, um, I saw the house that her grandparents had lived in. And she, Linda, had personally brought over uh, a library that was designed by the Queen's architects. And it was installed into this house of her grandparents. I've seen the library, it's magnificent. It's a huge, incredible room, big fireplace, books and books and books and books. And, um, I have to interject that I did a fundraiser for this, uh, as I have so often. Uh, <laughs> never have I been happier than to do one for this, this establishment, this place. Now picture this, this is a, a small Ozark town where uh, maybe um, the number one fundraising site for the NRA. <laughs> yes, these are her roots. And there's a huge anti-gay billboard right next to the sign that indicates the city limits. I went there and posed. <laughs> I have to get these words right instead of stumbling around like a fool. I want you to picture this giant English library that Linda commissioned, had brought over by ship, in this dwelling that her grandparents had lived in, and outside, while the men are playing with their guns and passing out Ted Cruz bumper stickers, <laughs> inside this improbable British fortress are the spunkiest new batch of Southern feminists reading books next to Lord Byron's real fireplace and plotting how to take over the damn world. <laughs> You probably didn't know any of this because Linda apparently does not have a very good publicist. <laughs> or a credible advisor, position for which I am tonight auditioning. <laughs> she has also turned down 17 state dinners because she did not want to get dressed up. <laughs> or wash her hair. Oh no, that was not a good thing to say. I mean, I just did that <laughs> to be perverse. Look at hers. <laughs> That's... She did not want to have her home photographed for Architectural Digest. That I don't figure out, I don't understand that. <laughs> oh, I remember now, I said, why aren't you gonna do it, Linda? And she said, I don't wanna have to plump the pillows. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm turning this into a, like a one-woman show and I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> When she asked me to do this, she had no idea what an impoverished ego I had. <laughs> she turned down being profiled on 60 Minutes. She just did not feel that she had done enough to deserve it. That makes you cry, doesn't it? <laughs> you see, she's from the generation that harbors the quaint notion that even false modesty is a virtue. 
but thank God, Kanye West and the Kardashians. <laughs> have cleared all that up. <laughs> and that's why she has come here tonight with Wrecking Ball <laughs> to claim what is rightfully hers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ari and I Present the winner of Glisten's 2013 Lifetime Achievement Award, my friend and adorable co-conspirator, Linda Bloodworth Thomason. Yeah.